Hans Christian Andersen, Fairy Tales and Short Stories, Volume 2, 1844 to 1847, by Hans Christian Andersen, translated by H. P. Paul. The Shepherdess and the Sweep, by Hans Christian Andersen, 1845. Have you ever seen an old wooden cupboard quite black with age and ornamented with carved foliage and curious figures? Well, just such a cupboard stood in a parlor and had been left to the family as a legacy by the great-grandmother. It was covered from top to bottom with carved roses and tulips. The most curious scrolls were drawn upon it, and out of them peeped little stag's heads with antlers. In the middle of the cupboard door was the carved figure of a man most ridiculous to look at. He grinned at you, for no one could call it laughing. He had goat's legs, little horns on his head, and a long beard. The children in the room always called him Major General Field Sergeant Commander Billy Goat's Legs. It was certainly a very difficult name to pronounce, and there are very few who ever received such a title. But then it seemed wonderful how he came to be carved at all. Yet there he was, always looking at the table under the looking-glass, where stood a very pretty little shepherdess made of china. Her shoes were gilt, and her dress had a red rose or an ornament. She wore a hat and carried a crook that were both gilded and looked very bright and pretty. Close by her side stood a little chimney-sweep, as black as coal, and also made of china. He was, however, quite as clean and neat as any other china figure. He only represented a black chimney-sweep, and the china workers might just as well have made him a prince had they felt inclined to do so. He stood holding his ladder quite handily, and his face was as fair and rosy as a girl's. Indeed, that was rather a mistake. It should have had some black marks on it. He and the shepherdess had been placed close together, side by side, and being so placed, they became engaged to each other, for they were very well suited, both being made of the same sort of china, and being equally fragile. Close to them stood another figure, three times as large as they were, and also made of china. He was an old chinaman who could nod his head, and used to pretend that he was the grandfather of the shepherdess, although he could not prove it. He, however, assumed authority over her, and therefore, when Major General Field Sergeant Commander Billy Goat's legs asked for the little shepherdess to be his wife, he nodded his head to show that he consented. "'You will have a husband,' said the old Chinaman to her, "'who I really believe is made of mahogany. He will make you a lady of Major General Field Sergeant Commander Billy Goat's legs.' He has the whole cupboard full of silver plate, which he keeps locked up in secret drawers. I won't go into the dark cupboard, said the little shepherdess. I have heard that he has eleven china wives there already. Then you shall be the twelfth, said the china man. Tonight, as soon as you hear a rattling in the old cupboard, you shall be married, as true as I am a china man. And then he nodded his head and fell asleep. Then the little shepherdess cried and looked at her sweetheart, the china chimney sweep. I must entreat you, said she, to go out with me into the wide world, for we cannot stay here. I will do whatever you wish, said the little chimney sweep. Let us go immediately. I think I shall be able to maintain you with my profession. If we were but safely down from the table, said she. I shall not be happy till we are really out in the world. Then he comforted her and showed her how to place her little foot on the carved edge and gilt leaf ornaments of the table. He brought his little ladder to help her, and so they contrived to reach the floor. But when they looked at the old cupboard, they saw it was all in an uproar. The carved stags pushed out their heads, raised their antlers, and twisted their necks. The Major General sprung up in the air and cried out to the old Chinaman, They are running away! They are running away! The two were rather frightened at this, so they jumped into the drawer of the window seat. Here were three or four packs of cards not quite complete, and a doll's theater, which had been built up very neatly. 
A comedy was being performed in it, and all the queens of diamonds, clubs, and hearts and spades sat in the first row, fanning themselves with tulips. And behind them stood all the knaves, showing that they had heads above and below, as playing cards generally have. The play was about two lovers who were not allowed to marry, and the shepherdess wept because it was so like her own story. "'I cannot bear it,' she said. "'I must get out of the drawer.' But when they reached the floor and cast their eyes on the table, there was the old Chinaman awake and shaking his whole body, till all at once down he came to the floor. Plump! The old Chinaman is coming, cried the little stewardess in a fright, and down she fell on one knee. I have thought of something, said the chimney sweep. Let us get into the great potpourri jar which stands in the corner. There we can lie on rose leaves and lavender, and throw salt in his eyes if he comes near us. No, that will never do, said she, because I know that the Chinaman and the potpourri jar were lovers once, and there always remains behind a feeling of goodwill between those who have been so intimate as that. No, there is nothing left for us but to go out into the wide world. "'Have you really courage enough to go out into the wide world with me?' said the chimney-sweep. "'Have you thought how large it is, and that we can never come back here again?' "'Yes, I have,' she replied. "'When the chimney-sweep saw that she was quite firm, he said, "'My way is through the stove and up the chimney. "'Have you courage to creep with me through the firebox and the iron pipe?' When we get to the chimney, I shall know how to manage very well. We shall soon climb too high for any one to reach us, and we shall come through a hole in the top out into the wide world. So he led her to the door of the stove. It looks very dark, said she. Still she went in with him through the stove and through the pipe, where it was as dark as pitch. Now we are in the chimney, said he, and look, there is a beautiful star shining above it. It was a real star shining down on them, as it would show them the way. So they clambered and crept on, and a frightful steep pace it was. But the chimney sweep helped her and supported her till they got higher and higher. He showed her the best places on which to set her little china foot. So at last they reached the top of the chimney and sat themselves down, for they were very tired, as may be supposed. The sky with all its stars was over their heads, and below were the roofs of the town. They could see for a very long distance out into the wide world, and the poor little shepherdess leaned her head on her chimney sweep's shoulder and wept till she washed the grit off her sash. The world was so different from what she expected. This is too much, she said. I cannot bear it. The world is too large. Oh, I wish I were safe back on the table again under the looking-glass. I shall never be happy till I am safe back again. Now I have followed you out into the wide world. You will take me back if you love me. Then the chimney-sweep tried to reason with her and spoke of the old Chinaman and of the Major General Field Sergeant Commander Billy Goat's legs, but she sobbed so bitterly and kissed her little chimney-sweep till he was obliged to do all she asked, foolish as it was. And so, with a great deal of trouble, they climbed down the chimney and crept through the pipe and stove, which were certainly not very pleasant places. Then they stood in the dark firebox and listened behind the door to hear what was going on in the room. All was quiet. They peeped out. Alas, there lay the old Chinaman on the floor, he had fallen down from the table as he attempted to run after them, and was broken into three pieces. His back had separated entirely, and his head had rolled into a corner of the room. The Major General stood in his old place and appeared lost in thought. "'This is terrible,' said the little shepherdess. "'My poor old grandfather is broken to pieces, and it is our fault. I shall never live after this.' and she wrung her little hands. "'He can be riveted,' said the chimney-sweep. "'He can be riveted. Do not be so hasty. If they cement his back and put a good rivet in it, 
he will be as good as new and be able to say as many disagreeable things to us as ever do you think so said she and then they climbed up to the table and stood in their old places as we have done no good said the chimney sweep we might as well have remained here instead of taking so much trouble i wish grandfather was riveted said the shepherdess will it cost much i wonder and she had her wish the family had the chinaman's back mended and a strong rivet put through his neck he looked as good as new but he could no longer nod his head you have become proud since your fall broke you to pieces said major general field sergeant commander billy goat's legs you have no reason to give yourself such airs am i to have her or not the chimney sweep and the little shepherdess looked piteously at the old chinaman for they were afraid he might nod but he was not able besides it was so tiresome to be always telling strangers he had a rivet in the back of his neck and so the little china people remained together and were glad of the grandfather's rivet and continued to love each other till they were broken to pieces End of section 13, The Shepherdess and the Sweep, recording by Joyce Martin.